Good morning, church. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I see a lot of green in the congregation. If you don't have green on, you're getting pinched. So, sorry. Sorry. That's what happens. Uh, Before we start this morning, I would like to invite up Jim Peters for an announcement. This has to do... There you go. As you can tell from this microphone, even, we could do better with our uh, sound system for people to hear. Uh, we could do better than having Toby wearing a series of microphones that only work sometimes. <coughs> so, it's still, I think you said it was on. I think it was on. Huh? It, it, it says it's on. Here we go. Jan will give us one. Well, that's why we need it. Yeah, yeah. We didn't plan this. These microphones don't work well on a good day. Uh, anyway, session has started, and we, you've been, some of you came to a uh, video meeting with our very first start of talking to professionals on what we can do. What we want now is to get the names of some people that want to uh, help us go out and gather information and get information back to session on what we can do. Mm-hmm. So, and to, if you want to be involved, and we can sure use the help, because there's a lot of things. We can work with the sound system for hearing impaired, sound system on how we do Facebook. We have so many things we should be working at, and we've looked at. We need your input. So in the back, I have a sign-up sheet. If you'd put your name and fill out your address and everything, email, then we'll get you involved. In, uh, have you go out and help us scope out what our choices are. We're at the very early stages and everybody's help is welcome. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, if you are interested in helping out, please uh, see Jim or see the sign up page. Uh, it's gonna be out there, right, Jim? You said what you said? Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, a few announcements this morning. I'll tell you what, on Friday, I had the opportunity to head over to the junior senior high to see little women at the school and i tell you it is a fantastic production today is the last day to see it so if you are looking for something to do this afternoon i highly recommend going to check out little women so make sure you get your tickets i think the showing is at two o'clock today is that right gina two o'clock so if you're looking for a great show head over to the high school this afternoon at two o'clock Our Lenten luncheon this Thursday is here at the church on, I said Thursday, it'll be at noon. It'll be from noon to one. And I think we're having pulled pork and cheesy potatoes. I'll definitely show up for that. Um, And we'll have a short message and some music. And uh, we'll get you in and out so you can get back to work at one o'clock. Let's see. Holy Week schedules are in your bulletin on the insert. We have actual times on them now. So we have our Monday Thursday, which is on March 28th. It'll be at 6 o'clock here in the sanctuary. We will do our traditional hand washing during that, during that time together. And Good Friday is a little different. It's on March 29th. We are going to open the church from 7 a.m. to noon. It'll be a vigil. You can come in. It's your leisure. We will have um, documents and some... Uh, devotions set up for here for you to just grab and have a seat in the pews and to have some silent prayer time with yourself or with your families. Uh, The church will be open from 7 a.m. to noon and also 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So come at your leisure. And of course, Easter Sunday worship will be on March 31st at 10 a.m. as normal. At this time, is there any more Announcements, joys, or concerns this morning? Yeah. As you know, all the, all the high school students are always so busy, and we have someone in our congregation who made it to Allstate with their speech this year. So Caitlin Trimble, who's also starring in the musical, got Allstate for speech, and we are so proud of her. Anyone 
anyone else this morning? Okay, let's prepare our hearts for morning worship.
everyone could please rise for our call to worship. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in Christ will never die. The Lord makes a new covenant with us. We are God's people. The Lord is our God. Keep pressing on, on toward the goal, the heavenly call in Jesus Christ. Please be seated. This is the litany of confession. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our failure to be what you created us to be. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, and forgetting your love. By your loving mercy, help us to live in your light and abide in the ways for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let us take some time now for personal confession. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone, and the new life has begun. 
Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Now let us join together in reciting the Apostles' Creed found in page 14 in your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, and ascended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you all. We invite you all to turn to your neighbor to say good morning and welcome to worship.
Let us come to God in prayer. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we ask that you make our hearts and minds alive by the power of your Spirit. When we hear the Scriptures today and hear your Word, help us to receive it with joy, hope, and love. Amen. I would like to invite the younger disciples to come forward. No. Oh, no. It's candy. It's candy. Well, Mary, what makes you think this is for you? <laughs> I want candy. Oh, you... oh, no, no. oh, I'm getting the older disciples up here now, too. I want candy. Okay, so I was thinking about something today. Oh, oh wait, 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 before we start, one thing I forgot. Let's take a look and wave to our online people. Everybody turn around and say hello, online folks. Hi, humans. Good to see you. Okay, so I can open this without exploding the face. Technical difficulties. How about now? Oh, there we go. I forgot to turn myself back on. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I was thinking this morning about candy, and Easter's coming up, right? Now, wait, hold on. No, Easter's coming up. What do you do on Easter Sunday? What do kids like to do on Easter Sunday? Ooh, collect eggs. What's that? Collect eggs. And what? What's it called? Uh, Easter egg hunt? Say again, Ruby? Easter egg hunt? Easter egg hunt. Yeah, that's the best part about Easter other than Jesus coming back, right? No. 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 Well, I was always excited about an Easter egg hunt because you had to physically search for the eggs, right? They have candy. They have candy in them. Or sometimes money. Sometimes money. What Easter egg hunt are you going to? Oh, okay, okay. Well, here's the thing about that. You know, one of, the, one of the funny things about an Easter egg hunt is when Pastor Toby was in youth ministry, when we would do Easter egg hunts through the church, six months, a year later, I would still find eggs that hadn't been found yet. And that would be a good day for Pastor Toby, let me tell you. But before I give you a handful of this candy... You can't open it until you say, if mom and dad say it's okay. All right? Is that a deal? Now, now we, I see a lot of nodding heads. Yeah. There's no, we're not crossing our fingers behind us, are we? Okay. So one of the best things about an Easter egg hunt is you get excited, right? You get ready to look. You, you're laser focused on finding those eggs, right? No. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> we know. You guys have like a radar for finding these things. And, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and the scriptures today, God wants us in the Psalms to always be searching for God's word, right? There's a psalm in the script, there's a scripture in one of the psalms, not today's psalm, but in the psalms that says, God's word is sweeter than honey. Can you believe that? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. even though we digest candy during Easter, we also, we also can digest God's, God's word and God's love. That's right. God wants us to always be in search of the word of God so we can take it in. Just like you would search for eggs at an Easter egg hunt, right? So you're getting excited because you know that Easter's coming and you're going to be able to have one of those egg hunts, right? You're excited about that. Yeah, that's right. You're excited. So, how do we get that excited to search for God's word? Let me ask you this question. If you were out searching for eggs, and you found a huge egg, like a big one, 
and it had a Bible inside it. Very good. That's a good answer. Would you? That's exciting too, right? Because God's word should be given to us, and we should take it and be excited about it. We should be excited as much as we get excited about searching for candy and eggs, right? Amen. Amen. All right. Now I'll give you a handful before you leave. And Ruby. Hey, you know, hey, wait, wait. If you get that, you got to come up for every children's message from now on. Sure. Maybe. Okay. All right. Maybe. All right. All right. Here's for you. Share it with your brother. Are you going to be able to give some to your brother? I can have it, so I'm giving it to you. Okay. I'll give you a double handful for your brother. There you go. All right. You ready? No. Okay. I, I'm just giving you a bunch because I can't eat all this. And I promise I won't. Wouldn't it be nice if we were all that excited every Sunday here? Like, the joy on their faces with candy? I just love it. <laughs> all right, so today's scripture reading it's going to be Psalm 119, verses 9 through 16. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips, I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes, as in one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees and will not neglect your word. This is the word of God. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. I think it was on Tuesday of this week where I was sitting in the office and Janet was in there with me and I was telling her a story about something that I was always on the look for and she said I think that would be a good sermon illustration and I said by golly you are right so today this one came straight from Janet's brain so I thank you Janet for that you know it's hard to believe that we are a week out from Holy Week the days in which we all know, as the last days, that Jesus makes his triumphant return to Jerusalem, to much fanfare, only to be turned on days later by those same people, crucified for our sins and brought back to life for all. And during this Lenten season, we have made it important to remember to seek Christ in all things and also how to do so. We have talked about our own wildernesses, how to show love for others, to last week and how it's important to make sure that we aren't turning the power off on Christ. And today, we will speak to always be on this, in the search for Christ, to keep ourselves pure and to guide us in all things about this life that we lead. Now, we search for many things in this life. I am someone who, if I have lost something, it will bother me until I can find it. At night, I love listening to podcasts when I go to bed. And throughout the night, my earbud will fall out. I only wear one because I sleep on the other side. My earbud will fall out, and if I wake up in the middle of the night and I search around for it, sometimes I may not be able to find it. But I can't go back to sleep. I have to get up and search the bed for this earbud. And sometimes, my wife will be the one that has to get up with me to help me find this. Somehow, wives always seem to know where everything is. Even when they don't know where something is, they always know where to look. As many of you know, I love pizza. But, 
I have a very deep love of Taco Bell. And when I was in high school, all four years, any class or grade could leave campus during lunchtime. So if you didn't have a car, more than likely you'd have to stay at school and eat school lunch. But if you knew someone with a car, you could hope to bum a ride out with them. My friend Greg had a car seemingly quicker than any of us in our class, and I specifically remember there was this old brown Astro van that was literally falling apart. I can remember my best friend Donnie, while we were driving in the high school parking lot, he would open the sliding door of the van and hang on the outside of it as we were going through the parking lot. It's not exactly the safest thing to do, but hey, it was 1996, we were having a lot of fun. And in 1996, Taco Bell was one of the cheapest options for lunch. And I remember going there for the first time ever, and my friend Donnie said, hey, you should try the chili cheese burrito. I think you might like it. We ended up going every day, because after I had that burrito, the heavens opened up. Somebody, I'm a, I have a fan. I love that burrito, and we would end up going there every day as school went on. As I moved forward and became an adult, I would go there every now and again to have my favorite cheap Taco Bell meal. And then one day in the early to mid-2000s, it disappeared from the menu. Sadness swept over me. How could Taco Bell take off the chili cheese burrito from their menu? I know a lot of people, and I knew a lot of people who ate that burrito. In fact, I think my own profits and proceeds was enough to keep it on the menu. Over time, I wanted to see if I could make it for myself, but it just never stacked up. And one afternoon, about six or seven years ago, I decided to throw it into Google and see what happened. And it turns out, it was never discontinued. It just became a secret menu item. Not only that, but I also found out on Google that somebody in the United States had made a chili cheese burrito locator map that showed you where Taco Bell chili cheese burritos were still there. And I looked a little closer, and wouldn't you know it, my wife's hometown, Taco Bell, had chili cheese burritos. That's right, yay! And when I went to visit for the first time in Heron, Illinois that one day, I went down there and I made my way over to Taco Bell. I got in the drive-thru and I said, do you guys really have chili cheese burritos? And the lady came back and said very happily, we sure do. I ordered four and I sat in the parking lot and I threw those babies back like it was the most beautiful thing I had had in so long. This was something that I had been legitimately searching for. And I finally found it. This piece of food was such an importance to me. And I wanted to know where it was. I wanted to know how I could get a taste of it once again. And finding this burrito, as silly as it sounds, was something that I would stop at nothing to find again. What if, just... What if we search for Christ at the same fervor that we do for anything else? What if the search for the Holy Spirit was so important that it was something we couldn't stop thinking about or stop searching for? Just how much different would our lives be? What would we do differently? If we lose our keys, our wallets, our rings, or anything important, we tear the house inside and out looking for them. Family heirlooms that we know are important are locked away so we know that they're safe. Family heirlooms that we know have been lost over time. We search. We care so much that it doesn't stop running through our minds. In Psalm 119 today, the author emphasizes the importance of following God's commandments and living a righteous life. 
And the tone in this psalm is serious and urgent as the author urges the reader to keep their ways pure by following God's word. The scripture details and gives so much importance of the power of God's laws to guide and protect us and the importance of meditating or thinking about them day and night. However, the author also reveals that this is a challenge for all of us. It is a challenge to commit to God's ways or to search your soul to be one with God. The psalm, though, is encouraging at the same time. The author encourages the reader to seek understanding, to ask for God's help in keeping those commandments. God wants all of us to search for ways to understand, to do this because it is difficult. If we leaned on God just a little bit more than normal, so many great things can happen in our lives. When we search for God with importance more than we do, we will find God. And the psalm today highlights the importance of being obedient to God and how, are we, how we are rewarded for our devotion to our Creator. In verse 10, the psalmist states, With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. And this verse expresses a deep, deep desire to know and follow and search for God's ways. It speaks of a sincere and diligent search for God, acknowledging that it is easy to stray from God's commandments and laws but with God's guidance, we can be back to where we need to be. We have to continually seek and search for God to stay close to God so that we are not led astray by the distractions and the temptations of the world in which we live. God wants our hearts to be steadfast and devoted in this journey through this faith that we all share together. You know, I, I might have attributed seeking Christ and God and everything that we do with me finding the chili cheese burrito from Taco Bell. But it's the truth. I need to seek the Lord with that much importance. I have to be able to give it importance in my life. And when I do that in the best way that I know how, which is with everything that I have, my life will be better. Our lives will be better. They will be better because we have Jesus Christ on our minds before anything else in this life. We seek God in every situation. When we do that, we are setting ourselves up for good things. This week, I got to have lunch with a Presbytery mentor, and he asked me, Toby, who preaches to you? And I had to think about it for a second. And the reason he asked me that is because he knew that I needed to be able to seek Christ like all of us here today. I cannot preach to myself. I need to find someone to help me find God. In order for me to find God through someone else, I have to want to find it. It has to be important to me. And how badly do we want it? How badly do we want to find it? And most importantly, will it be important enough for us to never stop searching for it. With Holy Week coming up, our Lenten journeys are going to take a turn into some hard-hitting scriptures with the betrayal 
and the death of Christ, but ultimately takes us to the witness for the resurrection. And as we approach this Holy Week, my hope for all of us is to realize the importance of seeking Christ in everything that we do. Our search to be one with God must continue forever and always. Amen. Jesus says, what will it profit you to gain the whole world and forfeit your life? Indeed, what can we give in return for our lives? At this time, let us bring our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, the gifts that you give to us are gifts full of love and grace. Please accept these gifts from your congregation to use for the blessings of many. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's come to God in prayer. Lord, we come to you today as we make our way to the cross with you. We come to you on the behalf of many. The many people in this world who are hurting, who are troubled, and who are unwell. The many who are feeling grief, the many who are feeling unloved, and those who may be in a dark place. Lord, we want everyone and we pray for everyone to feel your presence in their lives. We pray for the ones sitting in this sanctuary. 
We pray for those who are fighting illnesses. We pray for our people, Lord. Or we want to ask prayers for Chris Nelson. We want to pray, ask prayers for Alana Green, June Schmidt, and Jackie McTaggart this morning. We want to pray for the Harkin and Hackwell families as, as well as the Norris families as they walk through their grief together. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters overseas as they deal with war and injustices. Help all of them to know that they are loved by you and given mercy. Lord, we ask all of these things in the way that you taught us to pray. In our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, friends, when you go into the world this week, be on the search for Christ. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs>